हेलो ओके हेलो गाइस कैन यू हेयर मी आई कैन हेयर यू गुड इवनिंग ओके गुड इवनिंग um uh, i've made you the host michael i've made you the host so you are now the okay host. i'm i'm the host right now right yes yes so, okay, the session is recording already yes it is it is it is um uh, okay there's no lights in your place right no lights <laughs> no lights <laughs> all right just to our own just now sort of in green and never want to share my screen Why is it? Enable me to share my screen. My screen. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Sorry, we are starting a bit late. Actually, um, we had some issues, and um, which we try, which we try to um, to fix, and um, partly because of the rainfall and the rest. So, we apologize for starting a little bit behind schedule. All right. Now. Um, in the last class we discussed about the vlookup if error and we also talked about the range name so what we just want to look at briefly here is the match and index and the if function so it's just going to be it's going to be very brief so we're going to we are not going to overemphasize um, this aspect of the lecture all right so the other part is also an introduction to uh three statements um, financial model and uh, financial statement forecasting so what we are going to do as regards that is after this lecture we're going to drop um, a voice note on telegram so we advise everyone to move to telegram because telegram can actually accommodate quite a lot of people um, than um, uh, whatsapp all right so let's quickly go to the business of the day because we don't really have much time so i'm just quickly going to go through this now if you check the screen i actually send this file to you now the first thing here we have the lookup function so we actually look at the lookup function in the last class so we want to examine the index the index function right so let's take a look at this so i'm going to click on this link it takes me to it takes me to index 2 all right uh, let me see let me see this aspect i want us to discuss okay let's just let's go to index Let's go to index. All right. Now, basically, I I I know I gave you guys some assignments the last class. Sorry, something just. Hold on, please.
someone is actually sharing his screen here so i will need this person to stop sharing chisholm can you hear me i can hear you i can hear you yes someone is actually sharing his screen so what i'm seeing is a whatsapp message i think it's it's you or someone else so i need that person to okay uh, take out the okay sheet. i was the one sorry i'll be okay. one I'll stop. so have you done that because i cannot actually yeah, I'll stop sharing my screen all right fantastic so let me see okay all right so so this is what we have here so for now we just want to briefly look at the index function very briefly so basically the index function is used to look up a row number the last time we look at the vlookup so what we use the index function to do is actually in a situation where we have a large array of numbers so you want to know the position of a particular number let's say um, in this example now we have all these numbers we have these names rather this Boston, chicago up to say two okay something like this now we want to take a look at we want to find out the position of a particular group all right so that's basically what we use the index number for the index number is used to find the position of a particular um, um character it may be majorly most often times it's a text all right so let's see how we go about this now if i click this if i click on this i've actually made this simpler by having the formula here if you check the formula i am by you will see that there's a formula here there's a name that has been created already in the last class we discussed about how to create uh, range names i hope a lot of you can still remember that so what i would just simply need to do now let me just do a recap of that not that's not what we are discussing but i just want to show you something all right so let me go to let me go to formulas if i go to formulas and i come to name manager i can simply go to where i have distances all right so these are all the names that we have created in the time pass a lot of you can remember that we created quite a number of names in our last class so i can simply delete distances okay so i've taken out distances all right now you see what happens there. you see immediately i took out distances you see that there is a change there there, is, there are changes to this um, formula it's it's requesting for name meaning something is missing name is missing that's this is a name error so what i'll simply do is all right now please take note of this formula the reason why this excel is returning name excel is trying to tell us that i've taken out a name range okay that's why you are seeing hashtag name question mark this name range which is distances has been taken out all right so please let's take note of this uh, let's take note of this syntax the syntax for index is the first thing of course when you click on excel excel will always give you the syntax look at it here so the first thing you will have is your array all right after your array you have your row number after your row number you have your column number so let me explain what each of these syntax means the array which is the first thing we have here is your database that means the entire table is your array now in this case now when we say the array look at the array here all right the array is c10 to j17 very simple the array is c10 to j17 all right now that is the array now the next thing in the syntax is the row number the row number so basically the row number just tells you the uh the row okay you want excel to look at all right is the row you want excel to look so you are telling excel look at this row look at this column then return whatever you have as an intersection between this row and this column that is basically what the index number is trying to tell us okay take this row uh, you have a table array okay and in this table array i'm looking for a particular value all right i cannot be looking for what is not lost all right by checking through all the database and stuff like that so what i simply have to do is to tell excel excel i'm using index to look for a particular number so i type in the index i type in the table array i want excel to look at which is the database I instruct Excel, Excel, look at this row number and look at this column number. Then whatever you have as an intersection between that row and that column, 
uh, return that number, all right? That's basically what the index is telling us. So that is that about the syntax. Now, if I come here now, you can see, if I make this formula inactive, you can easily see the syntax of that number. Remember how to make a formula inactive. So what you just have to do is to type um, quotation mark, just one single quotation mark. You can see there's a single quotation mark here I've typed. Merely I type that single quotation mark, this formula becomes inactive, all right? So um, meanwhile, if you have any question, you can ask on the WhatsApp group. The question will be related to me and um, I'll answer, I'll be glad to answer them, all right? Uh, you can also ask on the Telegram group, okay? All right, so let's move on. Now, I can make this formula active by removing this and press enter. So we have already defined a name. And that is why Excel is returning the name error because we took out that name. Now let's go back and instruct Excel. Uh, let's go back and define that name, all right? So here, to define a name again, we talked about this the last time. I'm simply highlighting, so you can see that whatever we are discussing here is always in sequence. It's in sequence. You can see that here we are also applying name um, range naming, which we have discussed about in the last class. All right, great. So I can come here and just say distances, all right? Then I click on enter. You see what happens? So immediately I highlighted everything and click on distances. You see what happens now? So the initial number, the correct number was returned by Excel. Now, but we need to understand what this index function is used for. Let's, let's analyze this. Now, if I click on this and make this formula inactive, all right? Now look at what happens here. I'm saying index distances one and four. Let me zoom this so that we can see it properly. Okay, I believe you can all see this clearly now. Can someone hear me? All right, so can someone hear me? Yeah, can I can. All right. Yes, I can hear you, I can hear you. All right, so now I believe we can see this clearly now. So I've made this formula inactive. So you see index distances one, four. Distances is looking at the entire table array. One, is looking at the first, uh, the row, okay? One is looking at the row, and four is looking at the column, all right? So we take a look at the row here. This is the first row. You see, look at it. This is the first row. That's why we have one here. And this is the one, two, three, four. This is the fourth column. And we have four here as Denver, okay? So this is actually the distance between Boston and Denver. Boston is the row. Denver is the column, okay? So row one, column four. And it's exactly the same thing we have here, row one, column four. All right. So if I make this formula active and remove this quotation, so it returns 1991, okay? So you can see that's the color yellow we have here, 1991. That's the distance between Boston and Denver. Very simple. All right. Now, if you come here now, Okay, this is another application of index um, uh, index function, all right? Now, if you come here, you see that in this case now, we are trying to look at the distances between the cities we have here, okay? Now, the cities is are represented by the serial number. This is the serial number we have here. So if you look at this, we have eight. Eight is Seattle, C2. Then we have seven, seven is Phoenix. We have uh, five, five is LA. Okay, up to up to eight, which is uh, C2, all right. Now, we are actually trying to uh, look at the distances between these two cities. So I'm saying that if I'm moving from C2 to Phoenix, I'm, I'm leaving Phoenix, I'm going to LA, from LA, I'm going to Denver, from Denver, I'm going to Dallas, from Dallas, I'm going to Chicago, and from Chicago, I'm going back to C2. So now I want to calculate the total distances I've spent um, making all this trip. All right. So basically what we'll do is we have the syntax here. Okay, we have the formula there rather. Okay, so you can see that in the formula, we have actually defined a name. As I said earlier on, this is the entire range we have defined, which is the distances. All right. Now we have the column, uh, the row index first. The row is eight, as you can see here. 
this is the row eight, which is C2. Then we have the column, which is C22. C22 is the column. That's C, C22. Where do we have C22? So you can see that we have C22 here, which is seven, right? So this formula, we actually return the distance we have between eight and seven. Eight is C2 and seven is phonics. All right. Now, if you see what happens here, now you should know why I'm not making this range, uh, this ref, uh, cell reference. You should know why I'm not making it absolute because uh, I want Excel to return relative numbers. The last time we discussed about relative and absolute uh, referencing. I cannot press F4 here. It is wrong. Okay. I have to make it relative because I'm copying this formula down each of these columns. And by copying this formula, I expect Excel to return the distances between each of the cities. All right. So once I click on enter, I have the distance between eight and seven as one four four two. Can we examine that now? Distance between eight and seven as one four four two. Okay. We can actually take a look at that. One four four two. Okay. So let's see. Sorry, one four one four eight two. One four one four eight two. Okay, so we have it here. All right, I was actually looking for that. So, so we have that distance here. That's one four eight two between Tito and Phonics. Okay. Now we do the same thing here. You can see that the cell is relative. That is why it's capturing seven and five now. So that is basically what the index is used for. At the end of the day, we can drag this down, and we have our total here. So the total sums up everything that we have here. All right, so the total of all the journeys or all the trips rather from eight to seven, you can see eight is six, so seven is phonics up to down back to eight is seven one one two. All right, so that is basically what the index function is used for. All right, so uh, we are not going to overemphasize this.